Namaskar, welcome to my video. In this video, I am going to speak on a very important and versatile medicinal plant called Chebulic Myrobalan. Botanical name is Terminalia Chebula. Hope it will be useful to the viewers. In India, it is also known by different names such as Horitak, Harad, Harde, Hilika, Alole, Herda, etc. Because of its importance, it is called king of medicine. In Ayurveda, its name is Horitaki. It is a middle-sized deciduous tree growing up to 30 meter tall with 1 meter diameter. It looks lovely with spreading branches in new leaf with yellow flowers in the month of April. The fruits are ellipsoidal to avail with longitudinal ridges. It is found throughout South and Southeast Asia, including India. In India, it is found in wild, in sub-Himalayan and Himalayan region, up to 1,500 meter altitude from Himachal Pradesh to West Bengal and Assam. It is also found in the forest of Central India, South India, including Eastern and Western Ghat region. A highly resilient tree can survive even after severe fire. It is also a good copisher. Due to cross-pollination, variations in its fruits are found in shapes, size and color. So, there are seven varieties of fruits of Harat, namely Vijaya, Ruhini, Putana, Amrita, Abhaya, Jivanti and Chetaki. Accordingly, there are different botanical names also such as Terminalia Chibula, variety Chibula, Terminalia Chibula, variety Typica, Terminalia Chibula, variety Citrina, etc. Except Jivanti and Chetaka, other varieties are found in natural forest of northwestern Ghats region in Karnataka. Now coming to its medicinal uses, the fruit of Harad is called king of medicine and Amrut in Ayurveda due to its amazing therapeutic properties. The entire plant possesses high medicinal value. It is one of the most revered medicinal plants as it contains large number of different kinds of phytochemicals. It has been widely used in Ayurveda, Unani, Siddha, homeopathic, traditional Chinese and Iranian medicines and folk medicines. Nowadays, it has become center of attractions for modern medicines also. The fruit is reported to help in improving immunity, in controlling and normalizing digestion, maintenance of sugar level and reducing cholesterol level. The fruit is antiseptic, diuretic, astringent, cardiotonic, nervine tonic, purgative, laxative and febrifuge. A group of researchers reported that due to presence of some active compounds like allergic acid, tannic acid and chebulinic acid, the fruit has anti-cancer property. As per researcher, it has also pharmacological activities relevant to dementia therapy. Trifola, the famous Ayurvedic formulation, contains equal parts of fruits of Haritaki, that is Terminalia chibula, Bibhitaka, that is Terminalia bellerica, and Amloki, that is Amblica officinalis. It is prescribed as first choice for the treatment of many ailments. As external use, decoction of Haritaki fruit is used to wash wounds, as gargle to clean mouth and throat, to wash piles to stop bleeding. Its paste is also used to treat boils. As internal use, its fruit powder is given to improve digestion and in case of vomiting. Its powder is also useful to strengthen gums. Its decoction and powder is given to reduce fever. It is also useful as expectorant and is given in respiratory disorders like cough, rhinitis, difficult breathing and also in case of painful urination and kidney stone. It is also used as immune booster and to promote longevity. Its bark is boiled 
and the liquid is taken to treat diarrhea and dysentery. Seed paste is also used to treat pimples. Many companies like Himalaya, Dabur, Vaidyanat are making different kinds of products like Trifola, Trifola Churna, Haritaki powder, etc. A homeopathic product called SBL, Triminalia Chibula, Mother Tincture is also available in the market. Due to its astringent and hot nature, it should not be used in some cases like pregnancy, lactating mother, etc. Hence, it should be used under medical guidance only. The species has got other uses as well. Its fruits yield valuable tanning material and a yellow dye. The fruit is used for calico dyeing and printing. Haritaki dye is eco-friendly, non-toxic and it provides bright colored shade with good color fastness. A product called Karil as a natural dye extracted from Haritaki fruits is available in market which gives butter yellow color when used for dyeing. Tender fruits are used in pickle making. Seed is edible. The fruit is also eaten by deer and giant squirrels. The fruit is also used for making black salt and the leaves are used as fodder for livestock. Its wood is hard but need to be kept under water for a few months to increase its durability. It is used for building construction, furniture making, etc. Now let us discuss about its propagation and cultivation. The species prefers mean annual rainfall 1000 to 1700 millimeter, but it can be grown in low rainfall area also. Well-drained soils like sandy loam, clay loam and iron-rich yellow soils are better for its growth, but it is capable of growing in different soils also. It is light demander, frost resistant and drought resistant. It is mainly propagated through seeds, but also can be propagated through grafting and rooted branch cuttings. Seed origin trees take long period for fruiting, whereas grafted saplings bear fruit in 6 to 8 years. Grafted seedlings are produced by using cleft and patch grafting techniques on one and a half year to two years old rootstock. Even seedlings of Terminalia bellerica and Terminalia catapa can be used as rootstocks. Grafted seedlings have become more popular nowadays. Rooting of juvenile stem cuttings from two to three years old Terminalia chibula seedlings can be done in moist chamber by planting the cuttings in pots containing coarse sand. Also, one-year-old cuttings from selected tree can be used for inducing rooting after treating with 2000 ppm indole butic acid solution for 24 hours and by planting the cuttings in rooting medium inside moist chamber. For raising seedlings, best time for fruit collection to achieve better germination is from 1st February to mid-March. Seed germination is slow and poor due to hard seed coat. Hence, pre-treatment of seeds is most essential. After collection of fruits, outer flesh pulp should be removed by keeping the fruits in water for a week to rot. Before sowing, the deep pulp seeds are broken to take out the seeds or the deep pulp seeds should be kept for fermentation in cow dung slurry for 45 days. Alternatively, the deep pulp seeds may be clipped at their broad end carefully without damaging the embryo, followed by soaking in cold water for 36 hours before sowing. The seeds can be sown in mother beds or directly in poly bags filled with soil, sand, farmyard manure in equal proportion in the month of April. Bigger bags of size 8 inch by 12 inch should be preferably used as the root growth is faster and we need to plant one year seedlings for planting. Seedlings can be planted at 6 meter by 6 meter or 8 meter by 8 meter spacement in 60 centimeter cubic pits. In each pit 
FYM and NPK mixture should be applied at the time of planting. For optimum tannin content, best time of fruit harvesting is January to fetch more price. As intercrops, short duration crops like Madhunasini, Amritabali, Rosary pea, ginger and turmeric can be grown. In Kandi village in Jammu, the farmers are adopting harad-based agroforestry practices for livelihood security. The average yield per tree per annum is reported to be 100 to 120 kg with average annual income of rupees 1600 to 2000 per tree. Due to introduction of superior grafted clones, it is expected to increase the return. The cultivation of grafted harad is catching up in Ranjan, Matawar and Manual areas due to initiative taken by the Agroforestry Division of SKUAST Jammu. In Himachal Pradesh also, Terminalia Sibula in lower belt can raise farmers income as apple in upper belt. There is a lot of scope to cultivate this valuable tree in agroforestry system in other states of India. Emphasis should be given on development of its genetically superior clones, creation of more marketing opportunity for its products, and also on value additions including formulation of modern drugs from this plant. In spite of its resilient character, its wild population is still not common as one might expect. So, both in situ and ex situ conservation is necessary. Thanks for watching. Namaskar.